Hi, ArcfieldWeather.com meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Thursday morning, January the 15th. A lot to talk about this morning. Another Arctic blast has reached the Mid-Atlantic region this morning on the heels of a strong cold funnel passage. It will not be the last Arctic blast of the month. That's one thing for certain. We have a multiple Arctic air outbreaks coming into the eastern states over the next couple of weeks. In fact, the the last half of the month can feature some extreme cold conditions. This time of the year, the second, uh, third, and fourth week of January, statistically speaking, the coldest time of the year. So when you get a two meter temperature departures of 20 or 25 degrees below normal, that is awfully cold when you're talking about the latter half of the month of January. And that is indeed what we're in store for, it looks like, across a much of the northern U.S. We also have uh, snow going on right now across uh, much of the interior sections of the Mid-Atlantic region and Northeast U.S. and we certainly have snow threats uh, coming down the pike over the next several days and we'll talk a little bit about that including the possibility of some snow uh, this weekend in the southeastern uh, U.S. and we'll talk about that over the next several minutes. This is a forecast map, map of a uh, uh, two meter temperature anomalies for about 10 days from now. We're talking about January 25th time frame. Just kind of wanted to take a sneak peek here at uh, what is possible, not next week, but the following week. And next week will be awfully cold as well. But look at this widespread Arctic cold here by the uh, 25th or so of January. And again, that last week of January can feature some extremely cold air, something we'll monitor over the next several days and again next week we'll have a, a very very cold air mass as well to deal with during the early part and middle part of the week in much of the uh, northeastern quadrant of the nation now what's interesting here this is a uh, january 25th forecast map the same time we have this kind of a uh, occurrence going on across europe this is actually for the uh, seven day period from the 23rd to the 30th, and it just has some extremely cold air over the eastern part of Europe. This is often referred to as the beast from the east by Europeans because it tends to slide to the west here into the heart of Europe. So this is the same time that last week of the month of January, something uh, of interest and something we'll monitor over the next several days. Now let's start off with the discussion here on the continental U.S. Uh, with the NOAA weather warnings map. A couple areas I want to highlight. First of all, we're getting some significant snow right now uh, downstream of the Great Lakes, places like Cleveland getting a very strong northwest winds and very heavy snow and some snow is still occurring across uh, uh, northwestern Pennsylvania, western New York, northern New York associated with a low pressure area and a combination of that low pressure and now some lake effect snow. Certainly six plus inches uh, in many of these areas and that extends all the way down into the northeastern part of Ohio. So you're seeing winter storm warnings and lake effect warnings in this part of the northeastern quadrant of the nation. Meanwhile, take a look here down across Florida. We have uh, basically freeze warning warnings extending all the way down into south central Florida for the overnight hours going on later on tonight into early tomorrow temperatures certainly can drop to below freezing places like Orlando and Lakeland uh, across central Florida in the overnight hours you know yesterday I posted at arcfieldweather.com the uh, possibility of falling iguanas that can happen when you get below freezing in Florida, the iguanas up in the trees tend to get cold stunned, they kind of uh, freeze and lose their grip and can fall and then they recover when it uh, warms up again. But again, freeze warnings, this particular Arctic blast is going all the way down into the state of Florida, again in the overnight hours, expect some uh, below freezing temperatures. By the way, this Arctic blast may be setting the stage for some snow down across the southeastern states over the upcoming weekend. Now let's walk through the last uh, last night's run of the European model. This is the zero Z run of the European model and here is the 850 millibar temperature anomaly forecast map for early today, Thursday, January the 15th showing well below normal temperatures. Again we're at uh, nearly the uh, coldest time of the year from a statistical point of view so when you're 
15, 20, 25 degrees below normal. You are awfully cold for this stage of January. Now, let's move forward and notice that this uh, Arctic blast reaches all the way down into the state of Florida. Again, uh, uh, freeze warnings all the way down into the south central part of the state overnight tonight into early uh, Friday. And I don't think this will be the last Arctic blast that has an impact that far to the south and east. Now, we'll go into the overnight hours. Temperatures liable to drop into the teens in many parts of the I-95 corridor region, the upper teens, and the winds will uh, be quite stiff all day today and all night tonight, uh, gusting out of the northwest up to 30 miles per hour or so, making for even lower wind chill factors compared to the actual outdoor temperatures. Then we go in through the day on Friday. It remains very cold across the northeast and southeastern part of the nation. And yet another Arctic blast makes its arrival into the northern plains. <coughs> Excuse me. Later Friday, Friday night time frame. That slides to the south and east. And look at this. This is a, a temperatures 20 to 25 degrees below normal. Again, some very, very cold air. This is uh, mid-morning on Saturday. That dives to the south and east. There is kind of a, a one-day warm-up along the eastern seaboard, which is kind of interesting because there will be some precipitation in the area, but it may get up to, let's say, 4 degrees in D.C. on Saturday, and at the same time, there may be some precipitation, either in the form of snow or rain or some combination of the two on Saturday. Another threat for snow exists on Sunday. We'll talk about that in a moment. So this Arctic air mass again dives to the south and east, starts to spread out and this is a time that gets very interesting along coastal sections here. We have this Arctic boundary zone dropping to the south and east and low pressure may very well form right along this boundary zone with a a fresh batch of Arctic air moving into the area here. So this could ride up along the eastern seaboard and uh, produce some snow in unusual places down across the uh, southeastern states. Potentially, it could extend north and west up into the I-95 Carter region. We're talking likely late Saturday night into the day on Sunday. More on that in a moment. And certainly a lot of details still have to be ironed out on the weekend snow threats in the eastern U.S. Now we'll move forward in time. You can see this Arctic air mass does make its way all the way down into the Gulf region. Florida impacted once again and upstream. Yet another Arctic blast uh, uh, dropping out of Canada into the northern plains, the upper part of the Midwest. This is now early next week and again very, very cold relative to normal and uh, uh, when you're very cold relative to normal in mid to late January, you are talking some extreme cold, per, uh, potentially below zero kind of cold up across the upper part of the Midwest early next week. And this could spread uh, uh, very, very cold temperatures even in the Mid-Atlantic region by, let's say, a Tuesday of next week uh, with the possibility of single-digit overnight lows uh, in the early to middle part of next week across the Mid-Atlantic region. A very, very cold air mass right here. And this is all the way out to next Tuesday. And it is encompassing basically the entire eastern half of the nation. Again, all the way down to the Gulf region. Meanwhile, the West enjoying warmer than normal conditions during the early and middle part of next week. Now, not only is this a cold pattern for the eastern half of the nation, it's a very active weather pattern, and it is a difficult forecasting kind of a pattern here because there are multiple players on the field. We've talked about how there's a large-scale upper-level trough over the eastern half of the nation, uh, uh, pretty persistent here over the next several days. That will be the case, and embedded in that large-scale upper-level trough or what we call short waves that kind of rotate through the large scale trough and depending on the uh, magnitude and the exact location of these short waves will dictate who gets snow and how much snow and uh, there's a complicated forecast for the upcoming few days here really we're going through Sunday with respect to the possibility of snow in the eastern states. Here we start off today with a strong upper level low over uh, uh, the Ohio Valley, the western part of the Mid-Atlantic region, 
another piece of energy down along the Gulf states here, and that all swings to the east over the next 12 to 24 hours or so. Then we get into the day on Friday, and we have kind of a large scale area here of upper level vorticity. That's what we, uh, what we call vorticity, represents some spin in the atmosphere that can lead to upward motion down at the lower levels of the atmosphere which in turn can lead to clouds and precipitation. You get a piece of this energy that moves into the Mid-Atlantic region overnight, tomorrow night, into the morning hours on Saturday. That by itself can produce some snow or snow shower activity in the Mid-Atlantic region Friday night into the day on Saturday. Now I mentioned it, it tends to warm up a bit on Saturday uh, in the eastern part of the nation, maybe 40 degrees, for example, in Philadelphia, low 40s in D.C., so you may get uh, a mix of rain with this initial burst of energy here, again, Friday night into the day on Saturday. Then we go through Saturday night into early Sunday. Notice how far south this wave goes. It goes all the way down to the Gulf region. And at, the, at this time, we talked about this in a, a moment ago, that there will be an Arctic frontal boundary zone right here this could set off the development of low pressure right along that boundary zone that then, then moves to the north and east, potentially producing some snow way down in the southeastern part of the nation. And let's talk about that more in a moment here. That slides to the south and east, and this is a very active weather pattern. We have yet another wave to uh, worry about during the early and middle part of next week. And this is associated with that very, very cold Arctic air mass that drops south and east from Canada into the uh, northeastern part of the nation, the Great Lakes, the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, mid-Atlantic, northeast U.S., early to middle part of next week, a very, very cold air mass. And again, a piece of that Arctic air mass slides all the way down to the Gulf region. Well, let's walk through the surface forecast maps, again using last night's zero-z run of the European model. Here is the low pressure area that is causing some, what we can call synoptic scale kind of snow across western and northern New York State this morning. And now there's some lake effect kind of snow, more uh, smaller scale snow bands starting to form with the strong influx of this Arctic air and northwesterly winds starting to shape up Cleveland right now. Very strong northwest winds, heavy snow, that's lake effect snow, but uh, upstate New York you're still getting uh, snow associated with that low pressure system. In either case, it's accumulating. Okay, again, right in this area right here we have a lot of winter storm warnings or lake effect snow squall warnings in this part of the nation right now. Now, let's move forward here and watch what the European model does We'll move forward here through the day today, uh, uh, basically a windy, cold day. Temperatures have already reached their peak uh, for the day. D.C., Baltimore, Philadelphia, New York City, they will slowly drop through the 30s into the 20s as we progress through the next several hours here. Now, let's uh, uh, clear the page here and move forward in time. Here we go into Friday, very cold throughout much of the eastern half of the nation. And then we have that one piece of energy that kind of extends out from the main area aloft and it can produce some rain or snow showers Friday night into the day on Saturday in the mid-Atlantic region. Again, uh, likely to be more in the form of snow on Friday night and then maybe a mix of snow or rain uh, or snow and rain on Saturday. Not a big deal but something we'll have to monitor here always can cause some sl slick spots, of course, this time of the year. And that, 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 again, is Friday night into the day on Saturday. Then we go through the day on Saturday into Saturday night and Sunday. And here is when uh, the weather pattern gets really interesting here. We have this Arctic boundary zone, this next Arctic front, dropping south and east, way down into the southeastern part of the nation. Some Gulf moisture getting organized here. And again, low pressure could form right along this frontal boundary zone by early Sunday morning and it'll start moving north and east into the cold air so certainly you can get some snow uh, on Sunday let's say southeastern Virginia the eastern part of the Carolinas perhaps even all the way down 
this far south and east. I saw a report that New Orleans, not out of the question that even New Orleans gets some snow over the weekend. They haven't had snow, evidently they haven't had snow two years in a row ever recorded. It did have snow last year. Not out of the question that some extents all the way down this far south and east over the upcoming weekend. Now, European model keeps this system kind of confined uh, to the east coast region, let's say from the southern Delmarva Peninsula down across eastern Virginia, uh, uh, maybe even touching upon the coastal sections of New Jersey during the uh, latter part of Sunday. I do believe there is a chance this could extend north and west into the I-95 corridor region. It's something we'll monitor, of course, over the next uh, couple of days here. But there, uh, to me, the pattern says it can extend a little bit farther to the north and west compared to what this current run of the European model is showing here. And that, of course, would threaten places like D.C., Baltimore, Philadelphia, New York City during the day on Sunday, something we'll monitor, of course, over the next couple of days. So be on the lookout for a possible trend to the north and west from this uh, weekend system. Now, we move forward in time here into the early part of next week, and this is now Monday, and this is yet another br brutally cold Arctic air mass dropping south and east from Canada into the Northern Plains, the upper part of the Midwest, and it slowly edges its way to the east here, reaching the eastern seaboard later Monday, and especially on uh, Tuesday into the Mid-Atlantic region with, with some very, very cold air. And we've talked about these dash blue lines here. When you see what we call thickness levels of below 500, in this case, you can see a 492 here, that usually is correlated with below zero type air. So uh, possibility below zero type air early to middle part of next week in this part of the nation could even get down into the single digits in some suburban locations uh, in this Arctic air mass, suburban, suburban locations along the I-95 car region. We're talking Tuesday night into Wednesday morning and uh, it'll be very cold early to middle part of next week. We'll go out a little bit farther in time and here we go all the way into the day on Tuesday and again a very very cold Tuesday setting up for that part of the nation and some of that cold air does make its way all the way down to the Gulf region early to middle part of next week. So a lot going on here. Stay tuned for updates at arcfieldweather.com. That's it for now. I'm meteorologist Paul Dorian.